What's up, guys? What's up? Thanks for tuning in for all my people that are getting on live. Let's go. Let's get it. What's up? What's up? What's up? Where y'all chiming in from? Where you got? You hear the music flowing in the background. Hey guys, how's everybody doing? What y'all up to? What's up? What's up? Happy, uh, what day is today? Monday? Happy Monday. Grateful Monday. Marriage Monday. Blessed Monday. Um, let me just start my parenting. Planning and parenting. Uh Uh-oh. What's up? What's up? How y'all doing? Where y'all chiming in from? (coughs) Where you guys chiming in from? Where you chiming in from? We're going to jump right into it. I got my other half coming through in like three seconds. Um, What's up, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube? We are on YouTube Live. Come check us out on YouTube. Uh, Barker family. Um, This baby like the lip lipstick? She popping. Yeah. You like them? My mom just got me the lipstick and the Lip liner from Colombia. Isn't that cute? She thought about my leaves looking on fly. So what's up guys? Um we do not own the rights to the music. We do not own the rights to this music. Save for the background, babe. Yes, we do not own the rights to the music. And today's subject is chapter eleven. It's really called Planning and Achieving Parenthood. But I just titled it Parenthood. Mm-hmm. I love it. About these kids. Oh, the angels. How about this? Making sure they, making sure they, it's glossy. It can't just be red and dry. They gotta be glossy. What you think? Look, what you think? Don't mess it up now. Look, look, look. look. You got the, look it, look it. <laughs> <laughs> all right so what's up guys listen we are getting on we're gonna get started what's up what's up we got some people chiming in where are you guys at type it in type it in where you guys at wait how you turn this okay there you go so we're gonna get started um the chapter you want to go start you want to start i'm starting yeah you can start well you know um before well, first let's do a prayer or you want a grateful first and a prayer last we can do a grateful okay so you guys chiming in if you could put a comment or if you can comment or post one thing you are grateful for we are um learning to have more gratitude we are we're already grateful but we're just really building the what is it like the attitude of gratitude i should say and the appreciation more often so what are you guys thankful for what are you guys grateful for i am grateful for our kids since we're talking about <sighs> parenthood today I, well, I wasn't even thinking that i but know she was just gonna skip right over i was i was just i was gonna say i'm thankful for my husband i'm grateful for god regardless i know we're all grateful for god but i'm grateful for brandon because he's been really pushing and um helping me grow and like having grace and patience for me uh so i'm really grateful for that i'm grateful for everybody that's tuning in i'm grateful for uh, my phones being receptive to have this you know able let us um got the words kind of messed up but able to have drinking (laughs) able to have this platform and i'm grateful for my tea my ginger and what mango who made it tea I'm grateful for my beautiful wife that I have right here beside. She always has to. I've been messing with him. Yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah. But you guys, you know what's funny with the tea is he didn't even know. He was like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm trying to set you up with a nice tea for our life. And I'm trying to like set the nice energy and the tone and make sure, you know, um, he's good, right? You guys got to make sure queens, like you see my earrings, queens, make sure the kings are always good. Okay. Make sure they are always good. It says on here in the Bible that we need to be selfless. So the husband is mainly the, you know, we got to serve him. Um, let's jump right in there because we don't want to be long. We have a nine o'clock call tonight. So we don't want to be long. We're about to maybe like 20 minutes tonight. It won't be too heavy. Um, so what about this, babe? It says, uh, children are in heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is in his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them, right? So children are a blessing. They're a gift. 
Um, what does it say? Uh, you start, you just had to this part properly trained for a productive Christian life, right? So that's what we're supposed to do. That's what it's saying, right? Mm -hmm. That we're supposed to train them for a productive Christian life. That's the big deal. Us training them to be Christian like, to help others, serve others, bring people to the kingdom, you know, talk, not talk, but mainly like live the, the Jesus like life and bring others to, to God, right? So, and of course, be, you know, kind and loving and all that stuff. Each child is launched out onto the purpose of God, see, as an arrow from their quiver. That's a big, big deal. Um, when I speak of giving, I'm not referring to materialistic pampering the child. Listen up, parents, for those spoilers out there, because, you know, we all tend to spoil. We all tend to spoil. Thank you all for hopping on. Um, we're talking about planning and achieving parenthood. We're still in the Intended for Pleasure book. And it says a parent must give himself, right? Mm -hmm. He or she must be willing to invest all the patience and love and self-control he or she can imagine. And then some. So what is that? So... Your kids can also make you frustrated at times. You might mm. be having a rough day at times, but you still got to remember that they are still a gift from God. And so that right there, consider you to have patience and grace with your children. Mm. Put a heart in the chat if your kids ever got you frustrated, irritated, angry, upset, every other word in the book. So then at that point, you got to learn to have some type of self-control, right? Mm -hmm. You got to be able to control yourself, even though... It might not even be your child that made you mad that day. It might be something that went on at work or something that went on yeah. before then. And then your frustration just starts, you know, to build on, on others, a, build on the child. Right. So <coughs> you got to be aware of that. OK, that's really important because they, it's not their fault. And, you know, and it's OK because I've done this. And, you know, we've, we, you know, everyone makes mistakes, but it's not the kid's fault. Like there's been times that we'll be like, man, we're a little bit like harsh and intense. Like we should, you know, or we'll tell the, the like we'll tell Francisco or Fabian, like, hey bud, you know, mommy was a little upset. Um, You know, I, I apologize. I shouldn't have came at you that way. I shouldn't have had an attitude. Um, But it's a big deal to talk to your kids, you know, talk to your kids and let them know, like you made a mistake because what, what you're doing is what they're learning. Remember that. How they're acting in the world is what they've learned and really saw from you, right? That's the main thing. Mm -hmm. um, the wife shall be as fruitful, bind by the sides of thine house. Thy child, children, like olive plants, round about thy table. Behold that the shall, the man be blessed that fer, fareth the Lord. <coughs> so basically it's saying, what, that we should be fruitful. Be very fruitful. Very. How, how many? Very. How many is you it said, um, it said you can have up to 20, right? Says it on here. It is estimated that in the United States today, some of 13 to 14 percent of miscarriages are childless because of an infertility problem. An another 10 percent of married couples have fewer children than they want. So, you know, guys, it's a big deal what this is saying right here. It's going over, and it's interesting that it goes into miscarriages about there's so many. It says 10 percent of married couples. Have fewer children than they want because of miscarriages and things that they have with infer infertility. And believe it or not, and this is something that I'm starting to learn recently, is there's such a big problem or, or issue or situation in the world with miscarriages and women and infertility and or the men, but it's never discussed. Like it's not discussed. You know, sometimes you meet people you don't even realize they're older and they don't have kids, and you're just wondering, like, what happened? Or sometimes you see someone that's still maybe semi-older, don't have kids, and you're like, oh, when are you having kids? What are you waiting for? You know, when are y'all going to, like, go? And we don't even know that. With maybe they've been trying, but they just are having fertility problems, or they had a miscarriage. You know, things happen. Um, I'm actually in, in a mom's group, and... We hear so many stories on a daily basis of miscarriages of, um, you know, women that end up losing the baby, even at eight months, six months, three months, you know, 
even just when they find out or things didn't go through. And it's it's really a big thing, a big issue, but it's not really kind of discussed. So I thought that was interesting that this talked about this. Um, what do you feel, babe? Um, yes, I do feel that it is a very big thing, especially It's a very for, quiet subject. Yeah, especially dealing with, like, you know, a lot of women can fall into depression and all of that type of stuff mm -hmm. with not being able to have a kid or uh, just not being able to conceive because they want to enjoy that. They want to experience that. And sometimes they go into depression just seeing um, mm -hmm. women that can have babies. Or sometimes it might be a frustration where they see people that can have kids and they mistreating their kids. And they're like, man, I can't even have a kid. And they're treating their kids really, you know, bad. And there's a slight statistic I was just really trying to pull up real quick. I think I got it right here. So it's a statistic. Basically, it said women that are under the age of 30 usually they can conceive a baby from 8%. And then women from the ages from 31 to 34, they have more of a, I think it's a 5% what did you say? Uh, chance. No, 5% for, uh, for a miscarriage, 5% for 30 and below. Mm -hmm. 31 to 34, there is a 8% chance of a miscarriage. And 35 to 39, there's a 16% chance of miscarriage. And then it goes up to 30% after that. So I know a lot of people that we're dealing with, a lot of our friends and stuff that are around our age, that's uh, maybe some situation that they're experiencing mm -hmm. as far as, you know, just statistic-wise of what's really going on. Yeah. Um, as far as being, you know. So I just saw that this chapter has like 40 pages. It's kind of intense. Uh, family planning is a private matter for which you and your partner must take full responsibility before a holy and righteous God. Um, it is desirable for a newly married couple to have some time for adjustment to each other, learning to communicate and to share their lives with each other before accepting the responsibility of a young family. On the other hand, having children right away will certainly discourage self counteredness for any young couple and selfishness is one of the leading problems in marriage so it does say you know enjoy each other you just got married enjoy one another you know do things together get to know each other but then on the contrary it says maybe it is good to go right away because you're able to not be selfish because you're so much on the baby the kid and you know things like that and, the, and another thing i think that that a lot of people don't discuss before having babies or before they even get married is how do you how do y'all both want to go about disciplining your kids you know um do so when do you even discuss this though because in planning it's a some people don't do it some people do it early some people do it when they're having it some people do it at the time like the baby's here they're seven, we're disciplining, and then you don't even talk about it with your spouse until then. Well, that's crazy because even when me and you were dating before we even got married, we talked about how we would discipline our kids, you know? Yeah, you know, and, I, and I'll tell y'all guys, when me and Brandon were dating before the kids, these were, like, questions I asked him. Like, I know you guys are like, y'all were just dating. I had just moved to Atlanta. I was dating and I was like, I'm not wasting my time. I'm not about to play games. I'm living my best life, but still not going to waste my time. And when I was really, I think it was like the second or third date, I, I was like getting to know him more and asking him some questions about himself. And I asked him, I was like, what do you feel about this about kids? What do you feel about, do you even want kids? Well, you that know. that was the crazy thing <laughs> when I met you. I was what, 27? Yeah. So I was, I was like 27, 28. Mm -hmm. And she already had questions because she's like, you 27, 28, you don't have no kid? You know, in that's... the A? <laughs> yeah, in the so... A? Uh, and then I did, you know, ask some other questions. I was like, wait a minute, hold up. Yeah, so... Make sure you good. Um... <laughs> yeah, so no, I was just careful and safe. You know? But I did ask the questions, though. And one of my main questions were, um, how would you feel if I would stay home with our kid uh, for the first, you know, one to two years or so because I didn't want to put him in school or I wasn't raised like that. And he agreed, and we were on the same page on a lot of those check marks. And I was like, "Oh, I could keep dating him. Like he's he's family oriented and all the good stuff with kids." So and also, you you want to discuss topics like whooping, 
whooping, um, <laughs> disciplining, um, also breastfeeding. You know, you know, people don't really think about exactly. that. Exactly. You, you asked me. Yeah. Brandon asked me. Brandon was like, well, are you going to breastfeed? And I was sitting like, uh, we just over here trying to talk about if I can stay home with the baby. You're talking about breastfeeding. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. He said, he's like, you better. I want you to. Blah, 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 blah. I was like, dude, we don't even have to baby yet. We're yeah. not even there. We didn't even have none. No, we didn't have none. But see, these are the questions <laughs> that you want to ask during dating, right? Because even if you dating. So what if I would have said no? What you would be like, okay, I'm done with you? Like, well, I know that's one of the things that, you know, we wouldn't agree and see eye to eye on, you know what I'm saying? But I would have been, like, strongly trying to show you the <laughs> benefits of breastfeeding. Yeah. Opposed to not. While we were dating or, like, yeah, like later I'm on? Dating, because this this is the thing. As I said, like I said, y'all know me and Jen wasn't at that point in our lives. So baby, you need back up on this camera right here. Okay. We, but we wasn't at that point. But we still was having sex. So in case of a slip up, you are you still want to well, have. Well, well, we gotta mention it wasn't right away. No, I want y'all to understand. I <laughs> you said it like it was that like the first day. No, so it wasn't the first or second yeah. or third. Like I literally, we literally, I had the rule of three months, and I know some of y'all out there like, are y'all serious? And um, I don't know who is calling me right now, but I can't answer. Probably the movers. Um, anyways. And yeah, I'm serious. I was like, nope, three months. I really like him. I got to see what's up. I'm not about to be just giving it up. That's not happening. But anyways, yeah. So we did after a while, though. It wasn't like the third month came and it was like raw dog, diggity dog. No, it was like probably years later. Mm -hmm. You know, we were kind of like, okay. So we had to work on how, us being safe. But anyways, um... It should be recognized that fear of pregnancy often inhabits enjoyment of the sex relationship. Uh, that's interesting. The first consideration, obviously, is safety. Some methods are not suitable for women who have a past history of certain medical conditions or current health problems. So other women may be fine. So you have to also understand some, some women have health conditions, things like that. The second consideration is effectiveness which depends on large part on the user. Those couples who are careful to use a method properly and regularly will have far greater assurance of success than those who use it carelessly or irregularly. For example, when I give you statistics, this is what you were talking about, the statistics. The third consideration is mature of motivation. Some, can, some take more time and thought. A natural family planning but methods demand painstaking record keeping. So it goes into real planning, you know, and <clears throat> real thoughts and consideration and what's the motivation. Um, we planned our kids like, well, <laughs> the first one, <laughs> the first one was a semi planned. You know, we were kind of dating. You know, some of y'all know our story, some of you don't, but here is some of the news. You know, we were kind of dating. <laughs> kind of like off in the between right something yeah. like that uh why are you looking at me like that and brandon asked me like you want to have you know a baby and i was like sure and we had francisco <laughs> three months later found out francisco was coming three months right i found out three months um and then with fabian brandon was asking me about fabian for what like two three years and I was like, nope, not unless I have a ring on my finger. I'm not about to be no baby mama. Shout out to my baby mamas on live. Um, I need y'all to get a ring, get it together. Um, we need to be valued. And if you feel like I don't want to marry, I don't want a ring, then maybe he's not the one because you should want to marry. You should want the ring. You should want the wedding. So that's a big deal, right? That's uh, that's a whole other topic. I'm not even going to get into that. Um, so the second one, I told him all those like rules and regulations. We're not doing it. So eventually, of course, he didn't do it because of the baby, but yeah, he wanted to get married. Like, cause I wasn't going to just be playing house and all that good stuff. Right. And then this got married about it. We planned it and about a year later, Fabian came. So, you know, we plan, you know, we, we get motivated, right? Like, oh, we're mm -hmm. going to try this. Um, and I know some of y'all wondering if we're going to plan another one. <clears throat> Brandon, do you want me to answer that? Yeah, I want you to get into that. So basically, yeah, we we would like a girl. We would like God to bless us with a girl. So you know, maybe that might be in the works. But you know, we giving just a the time, time, time to God, 
time limit and you know and just having fun just having fun just having fun planning the situation right because you know you guys have to make fun you got to be connected you got to be in the same vibe um the next parts <laughs> you okay <laughs> no i'm like <clears throat> you want some of my tea no i don't like that tea uh, thank you, though. The fourth consideration is a matter of your own personal taste. Any method that you find unpleasant, uncomfortable, or embarrassing for whatever reason will not be the right one for you. So basically, it goes into what's uncomfortable. If, so, if some sort of birth control is uncomfortable or a scenario is uncomfortable or something like that, you have to talk to your spouse. You have to let them know, like, hey, I'm not feeling this. I don't like this. This is uncomfortable. Or maybe even the type of birth control. This goes into the different types of birth control. I'm not, we're not going to get into it. I told you guys that we were just going to get to the point when it comes to planning an active, achieving parenthood. Um, but it goes over the pill, the benefits, the non-benefits. Matter of fact, talk about, like, you know, what you have before you actually, what, what was the two main birth control? So, for me, I had, um, when I was younger, it was the depot shop, um, which I, they don't recommend the depot after, like, two years. And with me, I actually had it longer than what I was supposed to. So I was having some pain and menstrual concerns and issues. It was just like the worst experience in history. I don't ever wish that on anybody. And then I had, I went into the pill. Um, and then I just stopped when I was about, what was I, babe? I don't know, 24, 25. Now, let me ask you this, because I, I hear this a lot. Most women get them sometimes birth control just to, they have real bad menstrual that are cramping. Yeah, the in, pill. And it helps. Yeah, the pill is, they say that the pill helps when it comes to menstrual cycles, like the pain. Because I know some women that, like, their menstrual cycle is so bad, they, like, can't. They can't that. get up. They can't, they can't even, even walk. function. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, the, the pill is good for, it helps for that. Um, I wasn't doing the pill for any of that. Thank God my menstruals were very smooth and they're very chill. Every now and then I might feel like a pull of an egg or something but besides and that and then after francisco what did you have after after francisco Before. oh i had the iud yeah cause... so then i had the iud because i was like oh no kids we're good five years bam i'm good but brandon had other plans um so that's what we talked about it because you can take it out this is something they put inside um and they're like clamps and holds you know your uterus or whatever to not get pregnant um, and then you can take it out anytime. So that's what we did. We took it out after a couple of years and then bam, eight weeks later, six weeks later, boom. Was it six? No, three months, three months later, bam. Um, so then it goes into the hormones that different, um, birth control does some, you know, you guys know some of them, you yes. can't, you don't eat good. Some of them, you gain weight. There's different side effects. Um, it was one chapter in there about the vasectomy for us men. And these are different types of birth controls. And it shows about the different advantages and the advantages. We're not going to get into mm -hmm. it. But I did want to get into the one with the vasectomy because honestly, um, I'm going to let you know just straight up. I'm getting to a point in my life where <laughs> that might be an option, you know, just to be safe. Just to be safe because I'm not really. Oh, right here, vasectomy. Yeah. So where was it? Uh, go to the next page right here. Right here. So the advantages. So the advantages of vasectomy is simply means uh, is a permanent, permanent sterilization for couples who definitely want no more children. A couple need no longer use other methods of contraception, which they say is really healthy. It's healthier because the woman doesn't have to have birth control, which they say birth control is really not the most healthiest thing out there. Um, I actually know um, a couple of people that have like never taken birth control like ever. And I'm like, yo, I be telling her all the time, like, yo, you were playing with fire, sis. But she's like, she's like, I'm good. I'm not even, I'm straight. But then she had three kids, right? That's the funny part. Um, so yeah, so I know some people don't even go there because of that. Vasectomy is relatively painless and takes only a short time to perform. Um, I actually saw a post today, which is interesting. Somebody posted this young dude. I don't know the age, but they were like, this young man did a post about doing his vasectomy. Because he feels like he's good with not having kids. That's what he decided. Um, and he feels like he wants to do it for the women because he thinks, like, you know, breast control is not healthy. So he did the vasectomy. And I'm not sure how. He was younger, like, probably early 30s or something like that. So he posted it like a big, like, kind of like a protest. Like, I'm helping women and kind of like, you know, putting it out there. Anyways, what? Mm -hmm. You don't. 
<laughs> you know, to each his own. You know, I have my views about you know life, and this, I'm not gonna get into that. This you know, advantages a of thing. vasectomy. The operation required to reverse the surgery is expensive, difficult, and sometimes unsuccessful. Permanent sterli sterility must be expected. So this is what you gotta expect. It's intense. Just in case you decide to do that, it's gonna be expensive. One, and it might not happen to get the reversal, and you might be sterile for good. So. Those are the disadvantages of the vasectomy. So we better be for sure. So for you sure. Can make sure that's that's it. You know, you're done. Um, natural family planning. Um, it goes into the biological facts provide the scientific basis for natural family planning, which is what we discussed. That there is natural ways you plan. You know, and I know it's not good. For, it, not everyone can do it. Not everyone can get pregnant. Not everyone can do it naturally. There's been cases where women have to go to a specialist and get certain treatment they might get a surrogate um did it get into that any surrogacy or anything like that Ooh, um yeah. it goes into a then you can even then and then think about adoption you know and i don't think this goes into that but then it goes into adoption um and then of course the number one birth control form of birth control that's more the most natural way of birth control Absolutely. abstinence guys abstinence for y'all in the back and i don't know what that means it means you don't have no type of sexual intercourse at all mm. no penis in the vagina vagina on the penis none of that <laughs> none of that right um what else it goes into couples that are infertile which if we discuss that that's um you know it can be difficult because i know there's individuals that I've heard, you know, we tried for two years, we tried for five, we tried for 10. I think I met this, not that I meet her, but someone on the family, the group that we're in, it said she had like 30 something miscarriages. Mm. And I was like, oh my goodness, like 30, like let alone having one or two, imagine like 30 something and she's still trying, she's still faithful, she's still... You know, of course, she's getting help. She's had, you know, treatment and things like that. But um, it's a lot of things that people go through. Um, it goes into, says, here are some simple procedures to follow during intercourse that will greatly increase the chances. You don't read over that. Chances of... <laughs> so the chance, you highlighted it, the chances oh. of becoming pregnant. So there's ways, you know, you guys know, you look up things, your grandma tells you, you know, Put the right leg this way, the back foot that, do this, turn around, count to three. You know, there's so many things that people say that can get you pregnant, can get the girl, can get the boy. If y'all believe in that, put some comments in the chat. Let us know because it's interesting to hear these um, comments. Uh, I know my aunt does some like number, I think it's like a Chinese thing or something. And she's like, when did you get pregnant? When's your birthday? When is baby due? Like she asks me all these questions. And then it was like, you're having a boy. And I was like, okay, whatever. And it was. So I don't know if it's really good or if it's not. But anyways, um, so it says, why? What she got to do, babe? She got to <laughs> let them be on top. You know what I mean? Let them be on top. Have them pillows at the right. And just stroke it. Well, no, you can't. Yeah. Sister, so just don't move. Just yeah, all when, of it out. Once you let it out, don't be going back and forth. Just... <laughs> Hey, let it sit in there for a second and go ahead. And... Because it says, honestly, it says actually. One to two. Yeah, which is sucks because. It says actually with the woman having her orgasm, it kills some of the sperm cells as well. So maybe that's what happens a lot of times with us. Because we've, we're so bonded and so connected that when I, you know, when we, that happens. I'm just saying, you ever thought about that? No, I never thought about it. I just it. thought about it since you read this. Yeah. So we can't be doing that. Yeah. If we're trying to plan for, if we're working on another thing, like we, we can't be like, yay, at the same time, we be all excited. <laughs> you got to be like, no, you go. Oh, the, so then I got to go first. I don't know. Because I don't want you to go, then I go, and then I'm killing yours. But anyways, so... The, the good dilemma, good dilemma, guys. Um, so that was really the, that was really the chapter. We did we didn't want to be long. Um, anything about this, the planning and 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 what else, achieving parenthood. You know, um, like I said, pretty much is just you know, as far as having kids, um, we're here to actually guide them 
and let them be arrows out into the world and just, you know, sh let them just have God's gift and show what God has created mm -hmm. as um, righteous people, righteous human beings out into the world and just let them share their gift to the world that, you know, that can help, you know, everybody and God's people as well. So, um, so they're like arrows <laughs> that you shoot out into the world. Shoot it. <laughs> so, okay, listen, we're done. Appreciate y'all. We have about four to five chapters left. Um, I want to finish this book for the, this month, which is five days. And that means on Wednesday, um, what? Go ahead. You don't even know what I'm about to say? Yeah, yeah. Well, Wednesday, we have a call. We have a live. And I think we need to do like maybe two chapters because the next chapter is sex during pregnancy, which, you know, we're, uh, we're not That'd there. That would be quick. Yeah. And then the one after that is sex after the age of um, 60, 70, and 80, I think it says. And that's good right there because you can go ahead and start learning about that like before you get to that point. How is that yeah. going to go about? So we can kind of skim through that one as well. And then after that, it goes over... The sexually transmitted diseases, so that can be done on on the first. So we can be technically done on the first with that last chapter because after that it goes answers to your questions, yeah. and that's it. And then your marriage, that's a big one. Yeah, that's it. So um, so that was today. I appreciate y'all. Right under that, at thirty minutes, like I mentioned, it's nine fourteen. The one thing I did want to mention is um, I just put a post up earlier. I'm not sure if you saw my post up, babe, but I told you about it this morning. Um, I'm actually I actually ordered a book called The Happy Wives Club. And for all the wives that want to chime in with me and read it, um, I'm going to start reading it on the 1st. It says it's a 28-day reading along or something like that. Like it's a book, but it can be done in the 28 days. Um, so I want to do it. If any wives are on here that are like, Jen, you know, let's do it together. I'm, I'll order it. It's on Amazon for like six, seven dollars. Um, I'm getting it. I think a day or two. It's on Prime if you have Prime. And if you can't get the book right away for the first, um, just let me know. Like we can maybe look it up on audio, which it does have Kindle. So it's on Kindle for like three bucks, I think, something like that. Um, and just talk. We could, we could get a call. We could get a chat. We could get a Zoom. Whatever you guys really want, I'm actually open. Like, I want to help. And it, it talks about different ways to become the happy wife or if you're already a happy wife, to continue things to be a happy wife with your current spouse. <laughs> I want to I wanna reiterate that. Is the happy wife with the current spouse. It literally says that on the book. The current spouse is not... Oh, I can't stand my husband, so let me learn how to be a better wife for the next dude. We're not talking about that. <laughs> this is not the place. So, ladies, let me know. Chime in. Message me. I, I put it up on my Facebook. I'm going to put it up the next few days. If you do want to chime in with me, um, and if you can't order it till Friday or next week, it's, you know, cool. Let's just talk. Um, I'm excited. I wanted to get another book to keep the marriage thing going for me. Um, and, Brandon, he's going to... Are you going to... Yeah, I'm going to do The Power of a Prayer Husband and stuff like that. That's this book right here. For the husbands. Where are the husbands in the building? So we can do this. We can start doing this Men's Monday. We're going to go back to, you know, doing the Men's Monday. Oh, that would be cool. You kind of do a little chapter here and there. Get yeah, some ideas. Yeah. Because what, what, what type of things y'all talk about in here? Huh? You got into it yet? Uh, I just started reading like how she came up with it. It came mm, her into, submission. Yeah. Her relationship, her priorities, her beauty, her sexuality, her fears, her purpose, her trust, her protection, her desires, her work, her deliverance, her obedience, her and needs, more. her future. And more. So power for praying husband. So we're gonna, you know, it's good to I actually like I don't know about you, babe, but I actually like the reading a marriage book as we're just going through life mm -hmm. and reading other personal development books. I like it. Um, but anyways, ladies, men, everybody, let us know. Thank y'all for getting on. Appreciate y'all. Don't forget, you got your Facebook page. You got I got the, the Facebook page now for marriage porn. I'm excited. Go look it up, marriage and then porn. It didn't let me do the dots. So I think I did pure. I think I did marriage pure. 
open, renew, and navigate. So look us up. I'm posting, you know, daily. I'm adding things on there, adding content. I'm going to put the book on there that I'm going to be getting on. I'm going to put him and his book. And just add us. Look for us. Go on our YouTube, Barker Family. Go to our website, www.barker, um, excuse me, direct.me backslash Barker Worldwide. Check us out, follow, share, subscribe. You never know who can um, need a word, who can need some some help or listening advice, something. Um, honestly, guys, divorce is not really talked about. You just randomly find out like, oh, she got divorced. <laughs> and it's like, what? Or you find out on Facebook, like, yeah, going through a divorce or going through separation. So let's talk before we get those messages or before we see her with the next dude and you're like oh snap what happened to your husband right so let's talk about these things appreciate y'all have a good one you gonna pray out i prayed out last time so i think it's your turn okay all right let's go <laughs> play me all right everybody <laughs> bye yes. all right thank you heavenly father for the blessings that you um bring on to us and our family today was the topic was about parenthood and we know that all parenthood is a gift from god and anybody that's going through a situation where they can't have kids right now, God, I just ask that you put your hands on them, put your hands on their wound, their belly, and God, just let them be able to have that life, that abundance of joy and be fruitfulness like you promised us, Father. And we just pray that, you know, you just keep us in mind with everything that we do as far as just raising our kids the right way and give us a patient, give us grace as parents also. Give us also compassion when we also talk to our kids as well. Understanding, and that's another thing. We need to listen with empathy empathy with our kids. When it comes to our kids, we really need to listen with empathy and understand what they're saying instead of just coming up with our own solution, our own our own autobiography of how we lived and how we grew up. We got to understand what they're going through and really hear what our kids are talking about. And Jen, I just want to thank you, God, for giving us this platform again to bless other marriages, other families that come across this, right? This is just a blessing to us that we want to just spread the blessing that you give us and the gift that you gave us. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Going deep in there, ain't you? <laughs> anyway, thank y'all for chiming in. I look cute. What are we going tonight? What are we doing? <laughs> See There's a meeting in my bed. <laughs> really? No. <laughs> he said it and he's serious. No. All right, bye guys. All right, see y'all later. If Thank he's you. not, I will. <laughs> you silly. Ain't that the